Hello my dear students, welcome back to Learn Physics. Before starting the session, I am wishing all my dear students a very happy new year. So here, today we are starting the next chapter that is Semiconductor Electronics. In this chapter also, uh, Zener diode is omitted portion and uh, Zener diode is the main uh, omitted portion over here and uh, photodiode, uh, uh, LED, that and all are included in the syllabus and while I am taking the uh, portions, I will tell you in detail. So first we are going to start with semiconductor electronics. Here solids are mainly classified into according to their conductivity the solids are mainly classified into metals, semiconductors and insulators. So metals means we know they are conductors. What is meant by a conductor? It is uh, the current will be easily passing through that. That means it will be having a large number of or a more number of free electrons will be there. We know electrons are the charge carriers. So here if more number of free electrons are there means they will be the charge carriers. Right? So more number of electrons are there charge carriers. Uh, so uh, yeah, current can easily pass through the circuit. So they are called conductors. So all the metals we are considering it as conductors and its resistivity is from 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. That means what is resistivity? Resistivity is directly proportional to resistance. If resistance is very less that means it will be acting as a conductor. Right? Then next is semiconductor. So that means in at normal temperature it won't be acting as a conductor. Free electrons are not there at normal temperature. But when we are exciting it by increasing its temperature, the electrons will be coming to the excited state and they can become a, uh, a free electron and that free electrons will be responsible for the uh, conduction. Okay, such kind of uh, uh, metals or solids are called as semiconductors. Conductor means if we are not giving any extra energy also, they will be conducting, they will be freely conducting. Okay, in semiconductors, they will be uh, giving only, uh, see, uh, if we are giving external energy, then only it will con convert to a conductor. They are semiconductors. Its resistivity is ranging from 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power 6 ohm meter. So you can see the resistivity is increasing. If resistivity is increasing, that means resistance also increasing. This is resistivity is the characteristic property of a material, right? So as resistivity increases according to that, resistance also will be increasing. Okay, then next is insulators. So whatever uh, energy we are giving, that solid won't be converting to a uh, conductor. They are called insulator. Its ins uh, resistance value will be very high. That is resistivity will be 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the power 19 ohm meter. Okay, it is having a very good resistivity. So it can't conduct electricity. Okay, electrons can... Uh, are not able to, electrons can't move freely through the conductor. Clear? So next we are going to study about the, in detail about the semiconductor. Okay, semiconductor electronics only, right? So it is in semiconductor, it's mainly of two types. Semiconductors are mainly of two types. First one is elemental semiconductor and the second one is compound semiconductor. Elemental means which and all elements can be coming, uh, taken as a semiconductor. Germanium, silicon, the, these are considered as semiconductors. These are, these elements are considered as semiconductors. So it is elemental semiconductors. Example is silicon and germanium. Silicon and germanium are used as a elemental semiconductor. As the name says, compound semiconductor means 
सम कॉम्पाउंड से वन सिलिकन और जर्मेनियम और एनी अदर टू एलिमेंट्स कंबाइनिंग टुगेदर इट इज बिकमिंग अ कॉम्पाउंड एंड देन इट इज अ सेमी कंडक्टर आफ्टर बिकमिंग अ सेमी कंडक्टर इट्स आफ्टर बिकमिंग अ कॉम्पाउंड देन इट विल बी एक्टिंग एज अ सेमी कंडक्टर इट इज कॉल्ड अ कॉम्पाउंड सेमी कंडक्टर मेनली ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स इनऑर्गेनिक ऑर्गेनिक एंड ऑर्गेनिक पॉलीमर दीज आर डिफरेंट kinds of uh, this compound semiconductor gallium arsenide indium phosphide this and all examples for this uh, compound uh, semiconductors so semiconductors are mainly of two types elemental semiconductor and compound semiconductor first here we are going to study about the elemental semiconductor before starting that elemental semiconductor we need to know about the how the electrons will be there in a uh, um, present in a metal semiconductor and insulator that and all we are going to study okay here uh, in the case of first we are going to consider the metals or conductor okay a conductor when we are considering the energy of electrons while we are considering the energy of electrons uh, we are dividing it into conduction band and valence band okay valence band means it will be the lower energy level okay this is the valence band okay here this is the conduction band in conduction band the electrons which are there for conduction free electrons will be there in the conduction and a conduction band and in valence band uh, there's uh, non uh, there's which uh, the electrons which are more closely packed to the or closely attached to the nucleus will be present there in the valence band outermost electrons will be there in the uh, conduction band so if i am considering a conductor or if i am considering a metal when i am considering see this the usually there will be a gap between valence band and conduction band in the case of metals also but this gap will be very very small okay very small gap between the valence band and conduction band so uh, the electrons can freely move and the in the conduction band electrons will all, already electrons will be present over there okay this is about the uh, uh, conductor and in some other cases valence band and conduction band will be uh, overlapping this is valence band and this is the conduction band so valence band and conduction band are overlapping overlapping means electrons can very freely move to the conduction band to the valence uh, so valence band to the conduction band and it can become a conductor they, they will be uh, very good conductors but here in the case of um, uh, if there is a small gap between the valence band and conduction band this gap is called energy gap we will represent it as eg okay so this is the represent energy band diagram so here it is valence band valence band means the electrons which are not participating in conduction they are coming under valence band the energy will be here very low energy it will be having the uh, electrons which are having very good energy or very high energy they will be coming to this conduction band so these are the conduction band electrons there will be a gap between energy uh, this conduction band and valence band but it will be very very small gap between these two okay so electrons can very freely move to the conduction band and if it is some cases it will be overlapping also if it is overlapping then there is no other issues electrons can freely move to the conduction band to the valence band but what will be the case of semiconductor and insulator in the case of semiconductor if you are drawing this, uh, this energy band diagram see this is the valence band and this is the conduction band okay so here in the from valence band if while we are giving an energy or temperature while we are increasing the temperature to a particular level a small rise in temperature itself can make the electrons to move to the conduction band so at the normal temperature when t equal 0 kelvin conduction won't happen in the case of semiconductor but when we are giving a slight temperature to that the electrons will be ready to come out from the Uh, see uh, valence band and move to the conduction band and energy gap will be less than 3 electron volt over here so the electrons will be uh, uh, 
uh, if we are giving a very small uh, temperature itself the electrons will be moving so more the electrons which are already existing near to the top level of the valence band can easily move to the bottom layer of the conduction band when it is getting the uh, a small amount of heat energy when when it is reaching getting a small amount of heat energy it will easily move to the uh, conduction band okay so at but at t equal 0 kelvin it uh, no conduction will happen okay so externally some push is required that is now we are giving some uh, temperature to that so that electrons will be gaining that energy and will be jumping to the conduction band by overcoming this 3 electron volt or maximum uh, this less than 3 electron volt energy gap is bit less than 3 electron volt then it will be coming under semiconductor then what will be about the um, insulator in the case of insulators here i'll write down insulator in the case of insulators valence band and conduction band are very uh, uh, see, um, far away that is energy gap is very high that is eg is very much greater than 3 electron volt okay valence band and so if we are giving how much more energy we are giving externally it can't come to the valence conduction band okay the electrons will be all the electrons will be still here in the uh, valence band itself but here in the case of uh, valence band when the electrons when it is moving from here valence band to conduction band see here suppose if here from here one electron is reaching to this position so here one vacancy will be created right if there was an electron uh, this is the new concept which you are studying there was an electron at this position now it jumped to this point so here one vacancy will be creating so that vacancy we will call it as hole there will be a hole will be producing over there and that electron is jumped to this other position conduction band so they are electron is forming okay and here if from here another electron is moving to the conduction band means this position will become a hole so here in the case of semiconductors we will be taking the concept like electrons and holes these are the two points which we are uh, um, it's uh, new with the these two concepts that is holes and electrons till now we studied only about the electrons electrons are the charge carriers but in the case of semiconductor electronics we will be saying the vacant position or hole hole also will be the uh, charge carriers okay so in next portion we will be studying about the uh, in detail about the whole electron uh, and holes and electrons okay next we are going to study about intrinsic semiconductors intrinsic semiconductor you sh i told you semiconductors we are considering uh, as germanium and silicon any one uh, semiconductor we can consider germanium or silicon can be used as a elemental semiconductor so we are going to study more about the uh, germanium and silicon intrinsic semiconductor so in the case of germanium see germanium ha and silicon both are having four electrons at the outermost shell only four electrons at the outermost shell so they are free electrons it can conduct the free electrons can uh, conduct uh, electricity or it can uh, it can freely move around but is it a very free electron and the free electron means it is having stability for only four electrons are there at the outermost shell right so whether it has stability no to attain stability what will be doing see each here i am going to draw germanium here this is germanium this is another germanium atom and here germanium here so this is the crystal structure this is the structure of germanium and here germanium all germanium atoms are having four electrons at the outermost shell right it has four electrons at the outermost shell so these four electrons will be which bonding it will um, will be happening over there it will be having covalent bonding with each other and will be attaining the stability okay the this one will share the electrons and will attain its stability so in the case of the semiconductors when we are giving external energy 
while we are giving external energy what will happen these electrons can come out from the metal surface when t greater than 0 kelvin what will happen the electrons will be coming out from the metal surface so since the electrons are coming out that time what will happen the electron which was um, at which position it was present that will there it will a hole will be created okay the electron will be coming out but a hole will be created at that post at that position see suppose from here the electron is coming out here a hole will be created right so the when the hole is creating in such a manner the here one hole is there right so the electron when it is uh, looking into that here it has a hole it will jump to that position so again here one one more hole is creating whether this hole will be existing like that no the electrons near to it which is uh, more convenient those electrons will be occupying the position of holes and the electrons where we will be ready to occupy the position of hole also but so hole Holes also will be moving when the, this electron is coming to this position what will happen here a hole will be generating and this will be a, uh, an electron what will happen next this electron will be the hole will be occupied with this electron then again an electron will be forming over there a hole will be creating over here like this many ways it can happen that that is uh, the what I am telling here is the movement of hole also is happening happening and movement of electron also happening so how many number of electrons will be forming that many number of holes also will be creating in the case of semiconductors that means number of electrons will be equal to number of holes okay and the electrons also moving and the holes also moving that is the electrons and holes both will be the charge carriers in the case of semiconductors or will be responsible for current electrons and holes will be responsible for the current therefore the total current in intrinsic semiconductor will be ie plus ih electron current plus hole current this will be the total current in the semi in the in the case of a semiconductor clear children so number of holes and number of electrons will be same so how many number of electrons are coming out that many number of holes also will be creating so then uh, free electrons are very less in number right or holes are very less in number and a recombination of holes electrons also will be happening over there okay so uh, in in those cases what we will be doing we will be adding some extra impurity to the system so when we are adding extra impurity to the system maybe the holes will be increasing over there and electrons will be increasing over there that depends on the impurity which we are adding to it okay so the process of adding impurity to the semiconductor that process is called as doping doping is the process of adding impurity to the semiconductor and such kind of semiconductors are called as extrinsic semiconductor extrinsic semiconductor when we are adding impurity to the semiconductor they can, we can call it as or doped semiconductors are called as extrinsic semiconductor so about extrinsic semiconductor we will be learning in the next class so i hope today's class is useful for you and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe like and share thank you for watching bye